Doodle butt. So apparently, we're giving away a laser. Now, my channel is typically all focused just about uh, fountain pens, things like this. I review them, get into the manufacturing, engineering, all that stuff, but I guess I've caught in the attention of folks who do laser cutting, laser engraving. I've reviewed a few systems and have turned down a whole bunch, but someone reached out, they were in an Amazon store, and they said, you know what? We'd like to send you one for a giveaway. So I asked the crowd, and uh, the answer was an overwhelming yes. So here we are, folks. <laughs> this is this is way cooler than a fountain pen, I'll tell you that right now. What we have here, this is a Burn Labs 20 watt laser cutter, laser engraver, along with the rotary system as well, and there's an air assist. So yeah, I'm gonna show you what this thing's all about. We're gonna test it out. I gotta keep the packaging all good because this is gonna be sent to someone who's watching this video right now. Stay tuned for the details how to enter, and let's check out how this thing works. So just giving a quick look through our buddy Manuel. It's got all the instructions what to do. You gotta do a little assembly tighten some uh, eccentric nuts for the carriage. There's a video I checked as well. They show you how to assemble it. So I'm not going to bother going through show the details of me doing it. But what I will do, I'll follow the instructions, get it all together so you can see how it looks when it's done. And I'll point out maybe a few little tips or tricks or things they missed uh, as I go through and build it. So we're all put together. Let's check this thing out. This is still amazing to me. We're giving away this 20 watt Burn Lab Pro. It's got the air assist. And the uh, roller assembly as well comes with the safety goggles, some other gear as well. Uh, just so you know, I don't have the beautiful setup and workshop like a lot of other YouTubers. This is in my garage, like it's a mess. I got no room, but this we're doing the best we can with what I got. I put it together. The assembly instructions are, are fairly straightforward. I'll show you a few things I found and a few things to watch out for. So first, just pay attention to the orientation. There are these uh, front panels that go on here, which act as the legs. So make sure these go in the right order. The one with the warning label here is, is in the back. You can see there, the Burn Lab one is in the front. The picture is not the best to show that. I've said this with every single build. We, uh, we have an issue with the feet here. So we got a little piece of foam. We have four feet, four touch points, but you define a plane with three contact points and these aren't adjustable. So what we have to do is make sure the frame is square and flat when you set it on the table. So what I always do is I assemble the frame. The cross member wasn't on yet. Uh, in this case, I put a board across and a weight on top, had all the front screws here kind of loose and just adjusted it, put some pressure on there and then snug it up and then I check it. So no other weight on here, make sure the frame isn't uh, kind of conky a little bit there. That's It's flat on all four points if it's not work on that, get it so it's all flat because otherwise you're gonna have some problems. The next thing I ran into was these roller wheels. So again, this is a sort of an intro type of system. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles as some of the other laser engravers I reviewed. If this was a car, I would say this is like the Toyota Tercel. Basic model, you might have crank windows, no power seats, none of that stuff, but it'll get you to the grocery store. You could even drive across the country, not have any problems, but it's not the luxury ride like a nice BMW 5 class, something like that. But that's okay, it engraves, it'll do the job. Just a few little compromises you make at a, at a sort of a starting point. So these are the wheels here. There's one on the bottom, two up top that go up and down. This is like an extruded frame. So it goes along the channel. But one thing I found was some of the wheels had little bumps in them. So I ended up stealing some wheels this, uh, this goes with the rotary mechanism here, the rollers, and uh, it goes on here. That way, if you have stuff extending, it can rest on these wheels. So these wheels aren't going to be used too much. Um, but let me show you here. You saw it in a second ago. Yes, so this was the stock wheel that came on here. So it's got these pretty serious dings in it. When you slide the uh, carriage here back and forth, you definitely feel those. So you want to check for the wheels first. Make sure they're all good. Uh, it does come with some on here, so if you need to steal a few good good ones, if there's any chips on here, definitely do that. When you go to fit the cross member in, you can have your front panel on, leave the back one off, and this just slides over top the frame. You don't want to go from the other side because down in here there's a limit switch, so you got to take the limit switch off if you want to put it in that way. Now when it comes to the belt system, you can see there it loops up and around those wheels. There's the little pulley. It's connected to the other side, which... Uh, which has the stepper motor right behind those wires there. Now the belt's gonna go along in this channel and it comes out 
the little ends here, and there's some clips that you put in to, to uh, secure the belt. They're not, it's not the best design. It works. It's a little finicky. You might have to get something underneath to force it underneath and then snug it down. Cable management, it comes with uh, zip ties and stuff like that. I didn't bother putting that all on there because I got to take this whole thing apart again. And, uh, you know, I'll let the winner of this put everything together and organize it. Nothing spectacular for cable organization, but just be mindful of where you do it. You're not going to have problems. When it comes to running the machine, there is a little micro SD so you can put G code on. There is a little panel here that pops on and off. It's a pretty basic panel, but it, it does the job to run things. And then of course you got USB. There is no Wi-Fi on this machine. So the laser head there, this is not an auto focusing. Uh, sometimes they'll have a kickstand on the side to, to, uh, to do the focus as a reference. This one doesn't have it. It's got a little spacer that comes with it. And then just a simple adjustment on the front, slide it to where you need to snug it down. They have these little spacers in the kit. Uh, it looks like the one in the picture. They don't explicitly say it on the part list. Uh, and another thing they could do in the manual is just specify what this distance is off your workpiece because it should be the same as this, which looks like about, oh, about an eighth of an inch, about three millimeters or so. So they should just say that in case you lose it, you need to replace it. What was that distance? So uh, they should put that in the manual. When it comes to limit switches, there's only two. There's one over here for the X, or is that the Y? I can't, I can never remember. And then one down here at the bottom for the other axis, that's just for your homing feature. There isn't one over here or on the back of the travel. So you just sort of have to be mindful of that when you are framing your job and doing it, make sure it's set up properly first, because if you go out of travel on this side or that side, it's just gonna keep on going. There's no limits which to, uh, to tell it to stop. The air assist is included, plugs in, uh, it doesn't enable through the software, so well, at least the one I'm using, I'm using Lightburn, it's a manual turn on. And as you can hear, if you can hear that, it is quite loud. Let's fire up the machine here. We've got some more noise. So a lot of machines, they'll power up, the fan will go for a little bit, and then it will turn off after maybe 10 or 20 seconds. This one stays on the whole time. The motion system's actually pretty good, nice and quiet. But yeah, this doesn't turn off. It stays on the whole time, even when you're not cutting. So as I pointed out, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles and sort of cooler stuff on it, but it's gonna get the job done. We got 410 by 400 millimeter working space. You can see on here, it's got your measurements, so you can sort of keep track of how big your, uh, your items are that you're putting in there. 20 watt laser, you can do a lot with that. Let's find out what we can do. So here's a closer look at that first sample I did. This one here, this is with my Taser L2, so 36 watt system, all the bells and whistles on it as well, beautiful engraving. Here is the Burn Lab A2 Pro. So you can see pretty good job. Uh, you know, I probably should have gone a little bit uh, slower compared to this one if I wanted a darker engraving. It engraved nonetheless. Um, the quality is good, a little, just not quite as tidy. I did a, a cleanup pass. You can see that little line around the edge. So I did a cleanup pass, just a, a standard cut outline. And it is off just a smidge in some spots. I don't know if that has to do with the accuracy of the motion system. We'll see if that creeps up in other places. But overall, it's, it's not too bad. I forgot to put the air assist on. So that is the one thing. It's a manual turn on. So you can see about halfway. And this sort of at the top of the circle, I turned it on. And now you can see the print uh, is all good there with the engraving, I should say. So that, yeah, use the air assist, but yeah, you know, you got to remember to turn it on. Next up, I want to make a little project. I use this uh, quarter inch plywood I pick up from Home Depot quite a bit. I've made this for my, for my own son and then a couple other people as well. It's a plywood. It has, I think it's pine or birch. I can't remember. Maybe it's birch that goes on top. Uh, I, I like this wood. It's pretty reasonable and, you know, it comes out not too bad. You got to be careful not to sand it too much. So I thought, let's make a little project for fountain pens, anyone can can you know make it. I'll show you how to make it in Lightburn as well. Whoever wins it, I'll put the files on the SD card if you want to make this for yourself as a first project. But first, let's see see how the laser cuts. You got to do some samples to you know learn the laser, the power, the speed settings, all that. Let's see how that goes. So I did some samples down below. You can see that one that got all burnt. Yeah, that was me trying to do this with one pass and cut all the way through. Wasn't having good results. So I reapproached the problem and said, let's just do faster with multiple passes. And it turned out that was the right way this laser wants to cut. So I uh, dialed in the settings. I ended up with doing 100% power at 50 millimeters per second, and I did 20 passes. Now, how I did my circles earlier, I was doing it in brackets. So I'd do 10 passes, 15, then 20, then 25, 
and between 15 and 20 was the perfect uh, number of passes. My guess would be 17. I did 20 just for good measure to be sure. So I'm cutting out all these patterns now and we're gonna make ourselves a little fountain pen holder. And I have another little idea as well. I want a, a new technique, well not a new technique, but new to me, where you can make wood flex and bend. One of the most satisfying things is when you finish your engraving or your cutting, just taking it out and everything just pops out perfectly. That's the best type of result you can have when you're cutting out your object. Uh, let's move on. I'll come back to that project in a second. One of my viewers keeps asking about leather, so I got some leather. I messed up because the laser hit the sample, so I redid it. Just to show you the engraving on here as well, so if you're into leather craft, I skimped on the number of passes. I should have done more, didn't cut all the way through, but uh, works great on laser on the leather as well. Then I was making some burgers, and my barbecue scraper has seen better days. It's pretty decrepit looking. But cooking up those burgers reminded me of having a cheeseburger picnic. And if you get the reference, you'll know what popped into my mind. So I thought, let's engrave my barbecue scraper with something from my favorite show, and Canadian show as well, the Trailer Park Boys. And so I, this, this unit doesn't have a framing laser. Like I said, it's like the Toyota Tercel version. Nothing wrong with it. It'll get the job done. You just have to kind of measure from both sides instead of using a framing laser to set it all up. No big deal, just takes an extra moment. Still does the job. And uh, so went on the old internet, and here we got Ricky. So I got Ricky on my, I should have put Randy. I know, I couldn't find a nice cheeseburger picnic, uh, you know, graphic to put on, but let's see this. Here's the finished product. I glued it together. It's so, so I put my logo on the bottom there as well. While I was at it, I had another piece of board I used. It's okay, uh, looking dimension-wise, I didn't need to make it this big. I would actually shrink that outer dimension there and make these a little bit closer too. So I think a little smaller would look better. You glue them together, that takes a little time. Uh, I would recommend if you have some dowels that you can have at least two of them and then line it up and you just slip all the uh, the stacks there, all the layers onto it to line everything perfectly. Uh, this is not, you know not too bad, but very, very simple design. Looking at this, I did these layers with uh, slower speed, and you can see it charred a bit more, but this is on these ones here, I said, let's just let it rip. Let's do the higher speed and uh, 20, 20 passes. The time ended up being the same. This actually might've been a little bit quicker, right? Because D equals VT. So if you uh, travel 10 times the distance, but go 10 times the speed, the time is the same. So having to do everything in you know the fewest number of passes it doesn't matter if you have to go slower the the timing could be the same to go faster but with more passes so it actually looks a lot better this laser seems to do better if you do more passes higher speed it still cuts through all the way but you get a better result but anyways let's try this out i did the center to accept a robert oster bottle of ink let's put some pens in here so here's my little cigar box pen box let's start chucking some pens in here we have a large leonardo pen what else we got we got my mont blanc 149 let's pop that in there we got my smaller one, my vintage Pilot Elite. Let's do a Pelican M805. Let's go vintage with a Schaefer PFM. And then what else should we do? Oh yeah, so I'm on Omas 360 with this particular hole size. It won't quite fit in there, so it's not gonna fit every single pen, but let's, uh, let's get fancy and put this nice narwhal pen in there. So, you know, it holds it on the desk. It's pretty plain Jane. Like I said, uh, dimensions should have been different. The burnt edge isn't too uh, too appealing, but I think I might try something fun to fix that. So I've seen this thing you can do, it's called a lattice hinge or like a flexible kerf cut. There's all sorts of different terms, but you essentially make little slices to weaken the wood and you put them in the right spot, the right spacing. It's not too super critical. The wood can bend and flex and you can wrap it around the pen holder now and whatever else you wanna do. Never done this before, my first piece didn't work well, so I had to get another one. Running low in wood, it's not long enough, I'm gonna have to splice it together, but this is pretty cool. I've never seen wood do that before. And sometimes you have to use you know, pressure and hot water and things, but this is, it's kinda cool. I think this just might do the trick. Let's wrap the pen holder in this stuff. Just thought I'd come into the office here so we can have some better lighting. Here is some sample of that flexible hinge style cut. So this is the side the laser cuts through on, so you get a little bit of a smoke and residue from the, uh, essentially it's just from the glue that's uh, turning into gas a little bit. You get a little bit of a coating on there. On the backside, turns out a lot lighter. 
So I probably, when I put this on, should have used the lighter side to match. But uh, it is what it is. I thought the contrast would look good. Ideally, you want a piece of wood that's the full length of the object you're working with. So you don't have to deal with that seam. I was in a pinch. This is all the wood I had. So I just want to try this out just as an idea. See how well it worked. What I did is I put some glue on here. I don't have all the proper clamps. So I got a piece of wire. Well, two pieces, one top, one bottom. Wrapped it around and then just tighten it up there to snug everything together to hold it during the gluing process. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of neat. I mean, uh, obviously, I'm not the best at this stuff. There's folks out there to come up with really nice projects. This would be a cool uh, thing to do. You could play with the pattern and put this around a light bulb or something like that for a, a really cool looking light. I think that would be sort of a great application for that. But yeah, a, a way to cover up edges when you don't like the looks of them. Again, uh, if I were to do this again, I would just change dimensions and uh, switch it up a bit to make a little bit more visually appealing. Here's a close up the leather. I just put some leather stuff on here. Uh, I think it was just some mink oil just to make it shine a little bit. Again, I know nothing about leather. But there's a really nice crisp engraving. You can get some good depth there on the lettering as well. And if you just play with the settings, you can cut through all the way. I just missed it on this side here. So if you've got some leather work that you want to do, it does a great job, nice and precise. I, I bet you could also put the little eye holes in there. So if you have to do some stitching, you can put those in ahead of time or at least spot them for when you drive your needle through. So you got to make sure all your spacing is perfect. I know there's those roller tools that, for that as well. But you could do that right with the laser too. Let's cut right to it. What do you have to do to win this Burn Lab A20 Pro system with the rotary, the whole setup? These are the feet, by the way. So uh, if you put the rotary system on, the feet go on underneath to, to raise it up so you can do your engraving. So what do you got to do? Well, one, obviously, you got to be a subscriber of the channel. So that's step one. Step two, leave a comment down below. In that comment, there's a little catch here. You got to put a, a hashtag symbol and then the country that uh, that you're from i want to know that because some of the analytics i have from youtube they seem just kind of wonky they're not making sense i want to learn a little more about my audience some stuff i have coming up too so make sure to leave a comment in your comment you have to have a hashtag in the country where you're located uh to enter into the draw so that's just one little thing i'm requesting there what do i think about the overall system here i think this is great uh, everything all my other laser engravers can do this one can do yeah, it's missing some of the automatic stuff on there, but you know what? Uh, it I wasn't limited at all. The engravings turned out really well. I learned a little bit about the machine. Actually, I'm gonna do what I had to do with this machine and my other ones, faster speed, more passage, just way more passes. I think in the end, when I did the calculation, this was actually a little bit quicker than I was using with my other systems going slow with one pass. So that was really great. Look, there will only be one winner, okay? The draw will be one week from when this video airs, so check the description whenever this video airs. It'll be in one week time. A random comment will be selected from down below as the winner. So obviously only one person can win. That's awesome. Check their website below. I'll have the link down there. That's absolutely, I'm just blown away that they're uh, sponsoring this to give away a laser engraver laser cutter. So big, big, big thank you for doing that. Uh, viewers, I'm so excited for everyone who's going to enter into the contest. Good luck to everyone. Check out their site if you're looking for something like this. When you do win it, um, this isn't included, one of these honeycombs. So they have them right there on their Amazon store, a reasonable price. Uh, you're going to want to put something like that underneath, especially for cutting through. Engraving, you don't need it. Rotary stuff, you don't need it. But if you're going to cut through things, uh, you, you don't have to have one, but you will mark up stuff that you don't. So that's a good little accessory to pick up as well. That's where we'll leave it. I'm excited for someone else to get their hands on one of these things. This has been a ton of fun. Good luck to everyone. Thanks for supporting the channel. Got a bunch more fun stuff coming up. And as always, we'll catch you next time.